Hey everyone, Madrybred here. Pokemon Platinum with only one Regigigas was a shockingly fun and intense run. Let's follow that up with a much slower Pokemon. Today's the day that we figure out would I be able to beat Pokemon Black with a team of only one Munchlax. Okay, so if you've already seen my Pokemon Platinum with one Munchlax video, then you already know what we're dealing with here. Awesome health, solid attack and special defense, but bad defense and special attack, as well as the worst speed in the game. Uh, literally, it's five base speed. That's on par with Shuckle. We're normal type, so the super low defense and speed is going to make fighting types a nightmare to deal with. By level up, we learn all kinds of basic but useful stuff like defense curl, amnesia, screech, and body slam. Nothing here is too amazing, though. We're going to need TMs to get the really good stuff. Right away on the TM list, I'm seeing Return, Earthquake, Thunderbolt, and Shadow Ball. Those are all really solid moves. Plus, of course, the rest TM. That's gonna be a lifesaver for sure, probably required. I like the type coverage I'm seeing, but it's also a lot of special moves and our special isn't great, so it's not gonna be easy. Like always, I'm writing this script as I go through with the challenge, so all this part is being written before I've started. Everyone comment down below and guess if I can win or not. I think that this is winnable, but much like in the Platinum run, I think late game of fighting types are going to be the hardest part. Let's explain the rules. In combat, I can only use Munchlax, I'll need other Pokemon to use HMs, but I won't be allowed to use any of those Pokemon in battle. No glitches or exploits, no items in battle, only Pokeballs, held items, and items outside of combat are allowed. Also, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more. Let's do this. So right off the bat, I used the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to replace Snivy with Munchlax so that we can do the whole run with it. I name him Orange, like usual. After a few restarts because of terrible natures or IVs, we got this one that's Bashful. It's funny, I had one that was naughty first, and I liked the extra attack, but the IVs sucked so bad when I looked them up. Check out this one, though. I think it's pretty good. Look, I'm still new at this IV thing, but I think this is good. Thick Fat is an awesome ability that's gonna let us take half damage from fire and ice moves, and we start with Odor Sleuth, so we never have to go without the ability to hit ghosts. I'm feeling all right about this so far. Okay, early game travel. Right away, Munchlax feels pretty strong in early game. We're slower than anything that's our level, but in early game you don't really require many level ups to totally outclass opponents, since small differences in stats are a lot more meaningful early in the game. We are way too strong and tanky to have to worry about trainer Pokemon this early in the game, so let's just go do a boss rush and fight all the major battles of the first city. First is Bianca, who's super easy. Her whole team only got us to just above half health. Nothing serious to worry about. Sharon right after was even easier. We took less damage fighting him than we did fighting Bianca. That's a little rare. Maybe it's because we have thick fat so he couldn't just spam Ember. Oh, speaking of, next up is the first gym. Now this is either a grass gym, fire gym, or water gym, depending on what starter you picked, or at least the gym leader is. I replaced Snivy with Munchlax, so that means we have to fight the fire team. That's awesome, because Panseer's big move is Incinerate, and even though it was doing almost nothing at all, he never switched to just using, like, a physical move. What a crazy easy fight. Then on our way out of town, we have another Charon fight. I don't know how he leveled up his team in the last, what, few minutes, but we totally destroyed him. We only took three damage the whole fight. I can't believe how strong we are. Now with that said, we're back on the road and I don't think the next fight is gonna be easy. I think we're going towards the hard part now. There's an end fight coming up and that's usually easy, but after that is the normal gym and that one's always a nightmare. Two strong Pokemon, and the second one usually opens by doing a move that's extra strong if we made their previous Pokemon faint. And you know, we will, so it tends to be a nightmare in solo runs. Hey, you never know though, we're pretty tanky. Maybe it'll be okay. Now are you ready for something totally new? For what I think might be the first time ever, we lost to N right before the normal gym. Have I ever lost here before? Timber has Low Kick, a fighting move that does damage based on your weight. Well, I looked it up, Munchlax is 231 pounds, so that means that low kick is 100 power plus 50 for same type attack bonus, plus we're weak to it, so double damage. So like 250 power? Guys, I think I found our brick wall. 
So I'm grinding. I'm not really sure how long this grind is gonna have to be, but I don't think it's gonna be a short one. Partly because we probably have to be faster than Timber to beat him, and partly because I'm looking at the move list and we don't learn anything that we need for a really long time. Plus, the normal gym is right after N, and that one's usually pretty rough. I can't really get my hands on any TMs that I want until we get to the next city, so I'm just gonna have to grind and get strong enough to overpower them. Okay, after coming back at level 23 and trying a few times, we got this run where we didn't get hit by Lear early on and had enough health to survive low kick. He could have done it twice, but we got lucky and he used focus energy one time, so we still made it. Right after is the normal gym. Right away we lost defense to Lear and then half of our health to tackle, but we took out Herdier. Of course, right after, Watch Hog just uses Retaliate to one-shot us. Yeah, that probably could have taken us out if we had anything under maybe 80 health. It's a strong move right after making her other Pokémon faint. I think I just have to grind more and then hope she doesn't use Retaliate, since I remember that she doesn't always use it, even though she really always should. I came back and tried again after leveling up once and learning Chip Away, since it's a little stronger than Tackle in this game. But the fight went basically the exact same. Dealing more damage would be nice, but right now what we really need is health, defense, and speed. We're only gonna get that through level ups. Okay, all the way at level 30, and we're doing enough damage that I can nearly one-shot Herdier, but not quite. So we still get hit by Takedown and Leer, and end up losing to Retaliate as a result. Okay, it's gotta be only one or two more levels before we can win this, right? Alright, so after four tries at level 31 where we lost to getting critically hit, yes really, we had this run where she used Leer instead of Retaliate. That has gotta be one of the dumbest moves I've ever seen outside of a Gen 1 run, but thank you for the long-awaited win! <laughs> With that finally done, we're in the Pinwheel Forest. So what do you think the next part of the run is going to look like? I know that in the next city I can get the TM for rest. I don't know if I'll have enough health to get away with using it quite yet, but I'm pretty sure that I'll be using it before the end of the run. I mean, I'd be really surprised if I wasn't. I know that the TM for return is coming up, and I for sure want that, but it's not until I beat the bug gym and both rivals again. Oh, and then there's the Shadow Ball TM that I think I'm gonna need to win the run, but I don't remember if I can actually get deep enough in the Sand Castle place to get that. Sand Castle? Sand Ruins? I guess it's Sand Ruins. Okay, time for the Bug Gym. This one took a few tries, but right away, if we just spam Chip away, then we can not only get Whirlipede to waste a bunch of potions, but we never take a hit making it faint. Dwebble was weak but instantly worried me when he hit a sand attack. I lost some health before Luvani came out. Now this thing beats us with crits, but this time we lucked out and it didn't crit us with Razor Leaf, so two hits of Chip Away beat it. We need a bit of luck to not miss or get crit, but overall it wasn't too bad. On our way out of town is another Bianca fight, yet another fight where she throws her whole team at us to do like 20 damage total. It seems like if they don't have any awesome effects to throw on us, or a really powerful fighting type move to put us away, then we have an easy time. Right after that was Charon, who did about the same amount of damage. Mind you, that's only because of the Sandstorm. He'd have done even worse if not for the Sandstorm. Man, since when is Charon the weaker of the two? We have an end fight right after this, and it's often a hard one. Let's hope for the best. Oh man, so the end fight was a one-shot sweep with return, but I really didn't think I was gonna make it to the end. It's the standard Monchalax issue. We do great damage, but being so slow that we take a hit before every knockout really adds up. It has me kind of worrying about the electric gym. Maybe it's time I learn rest and start building up a defense or something. Well, I was wrong to worry. I was worried that they'd hit hard, but they only used their special moves, and our special defense is great so we were never in any real danger. The Charon fight right after was a fair bit harder. We lost the first time to Torment, keeping us from using Return every turn, but the second try he never used it, so we won. Alright, so the last few major fights went pretty smoothly, but I'm kinda worried about what's coming up. We've got the Ground Gym, and although her return is pretty strong, I don't think it's strong enough to just overpower her whole team. That makes me think that I'll need to learn Rest and build up Defense Curl so that I can outlast her team. 
I guess that means I'll have to ditch Amnesia. It's a good move, but our defense curl is just more useful to us. Our defense is a real weak point, and we might use Rollout later. If so, defense curl's a good choice, but I also might not, because return with the same type attack bonus and a Silk Scarf is really good, and there's no way that Rollout can compare to that. Anyway, I might need a new move to win this fight, but let's try it first and just see what happens. Time for the ground gym. First is Krokorok, who instantly hits us with Swagger, so we one-shot him. I tried this fight many times. That Swagger is required. Next is Palpitoad, but we just one-shot him. Again, thanks to Swagger. Last is Exadrill, and this thing completely destroyed me in so many attempts. He starts by boosting his attack and speed, and I know that if he does it twice and hits us, we just go down. So I just kept hitting him, and he keeps healing. He ended up critting a rock slide to take us from full health to only 14, then he fainted. That took 7 tries and in the end we only won because we got hit by Swagger to power up our attack and then didn't hit ourselves in confusion. It took longer than it looked. <laughs> After all of that, we have another Bianca fight, and although it was easy, it's also the one where we took by far the most damage. It's all thanks to her hitting really hard with revenge, but outside of that we could just sweep most of her team. We're back to traveling now, on our way to charge Stone Cave. There's a usually easy end fight in there, then we have the Celestial Tower and Flying Gym. I think the Flying Gym might be okay, although I'm not totally sure what to expect, but I'm worried about the ghost trainers in the Celestial Tower. I don't really think that Lick is gonna cut it, but I guess we'll see when we get there. Okay, so the end fight in Charged Stone Cave was actually hard for once, to the point that I finally caved and learned rest since we just couldn't handle all those physical attacks without it. It was a super slow fight since he was spamming defense ups while I did, but just maxing out our defense, using rest to heal when we needed it, and using return got us the win in the long run. Alright, we're in the Celestial Tower on our way to do the Flying Gym. I was kinda worried about the tower, but Lick ended up taking out the ghosts super easily. I guess just because it's super effective and their defense isn't good. Long term, I'm not worried about the ghosts, because I think Shadow Ball will do the trick, but I was pretty worried that they'd be too much for us here. Flying Gym should be pretty easy, right? Let's go do that, probably lose to Charon a few times, then we can do Twist Mountain and get it done while it's still winter. You know, I was originally thinking about learning Rollout for this Flying Gym fight, but I figured that Return would probably be strong enough. And I'm happy I went with that decision, because it was super easy. Charon might be harder. I think I'll have to build up my defense for sure. He's got a strong fighting type after all. Nah, Charon ended up being easy. Weirdly enough, it wasn't Pig Knight that was a challenge, but Simisage using Seed Bomb. It looked a little close for a moment, but I could have always just built up defense early on in the fight if I really wanted to. It was easy. Hey, check it out, Twist Mountain in winter, so we get the shortcut, and I remembered where it is. I'm gonna take this as a sign of good luck that the Ice Gym will be crazy easy. I mean, we have Thick Fat, so what's he even gonna do to us? Okay, so we're at the Ice Gym, and it's always easy, and believe it or not, we took way more damage in this fight than in most of the gyms. I mean, it's only because they used Swagger and we hit ourselves, but still. Yeah, it was an easy first try, they never stood a chance. We would have had to have gotten abominable luck with Confusion to have lost that. With that done, we only have a little bit of traveling left. I've got to do Relic Castle, the last Bianca fight, the Dragon Gym, the last Charon fight, and then we're on to the Elite Four. Now, I think the next two fights are going to go by really easily, but I'm worried about the Elite Four. The Ghost and Fighting Trainers are just going to be a nightmare. I made sure to pick up the TM for Shadow Ball while I was in Relic Castle. It uses our special attack instead of regular attack, but it also has four times more power than Lick, so I think it's going to be stronger. I think I'm mostly going to need this for Chantel, although I do believe the final boss battle starts with Kafagrigus, so this wouldn't be a bad idea for that either. Let's go fight Bianca. Right away, Stoutland went down after only dealing a little bit of damage, but Samurott was next. Now, I was worried about him hitting me with something strong, but he decided to use Aqua Jet, so it did almost nothing. Simisir used a fire move that obviously did almost nothing since we have Thick Fat, so I took the chance to use Rest and heal back up before easily taking him down. Last was Masharna, who was a two-shot after it missed Hypnosis. Not bad. Next up is the Dragon Gym. 
Fracture just spams Dragon Dance, so I decided to spam Defense Curl until we maxed out. He uses Dragon Tail for decent damage, but we have no HM Pokemon right now, so he can't make us switch. I decided to use Rest to heal back up before I finished him off, just in case. We had just above half health as he went down. Second is Dredagon, who was nearly a one-shot. Best part is that he missed us, so we got to finish him off. Mind you, he kept using potions, and he has rough skin, so we lost a ton of health from that. As Haxorus came out, we had to use Rest, and believe it or not, but we were fast enough to go first. Thanks to that, we had tons of time to sleep through his attacks and finish him off when he woke up. Easy fight! And last for this little boss rush is Charon, who I literally didn't even need to use Defense Curl for. I just spammed Return and won in under two minutes. Feels good to be on a roll. With all of that done, we're at Victory Road, and look, I'm gonna be honest, I didn't think I was gonna make it this far at this low of a level. I mean, do we really stand a chance at all against the Elite Four right now? <laughs> Probably not. I mean, there's no possible way that I could beat the Ghost Elite Four member or the fighting one like this. Maybe I could brute force the Psychic one, but I, even then, I don't think it's going to be that easy. I do know that the Elite Four are much harder than the gym leaders in this game, as they are in plenty of them, but I do remember the jump in this one being pretty big. Now that we're at the Elite Four, let's take a look at our team. Well, right away, level 59 is way lower than I'd normally be when I get here, so that explains some of the hilariously bad stats. You know what, great health aside, this is not too far off the stats of a lot of our weaker Pokémon when they reach here. Just, you know, they'd be 10 levels higher. Also, we're slower than most of the other Pokémon I use, and that's a problem. I'm gonna predict that Grimsley and Caitlyn will go okay, Chantel could go either way, and Marshall is going to beat us until we grind. Like, there's no way we stand a chance against him. Make your final guesses on if we can win this or not. Let's do this. First is Ghost Trainer Chantel. Yeah, this went horribly. So the first few tries, we had a horrible time with Kafa Grigus, but at least we made it faint. Just to easily go down to Golurk's Earthquake. So I tried to get all six defense curls in, but that makes Kafagrigus take an entire four minutes to take down. During that time, we get hit so many times that we end up running out of uses of rest. He uses Psychic, so we almost always get a special defense drop at least once, forcing us to use rest even more often. Plus, if we're awake, he burns us, and that means we just have to use rest again. The best part is that in the end it didn't matter, because then Golurk started using Curse, so we were doomed anyway. Well, you can do the Elite Four in any order in this game, so I guess I'll go do the other ones first. Second is Dark Trainer Grimsley. We instantly lose because Scrafty is faster than us and two-shots us. Well, that wasn't nearly as easy as I was hoping. I kind of forgot about this. Third is Fighting Trainer Marshall. Yeah, obviously we lose, and it's for the same reason. We get two-shot by fighting moves and we're slow. The worst part is that he uses Storm Throw, and that move always crits, so I can't even rely on Defense Curl for the start of the fight. Fourth is Psychic Trainer Caitlyn. I'm gonna cut to the chase here and say that we lose really fast against Sigilith, because literally just one special defense drop makes it so that we're so frail that we can't use rest and survive. This went so much worse than I was ready for. All right, so I'm gonna grind for a bit. I don't really mind grinding a bit right now. I figure that by our standard of level 70, we'd stand a fighting chance. So I'm used to having to get to that level by now. Not that Gen 5 grinding isn't slow, mind you. We do lose out on experience because we have to fight things that are a lower level than us, and that's just how experience works in this game. But just getting to level 70 isn't too brutal. We have long since maxed out our effort values though, so if we need to be more than level 70, I'll use rare candies. I've got to save some time this week. I'll tell you why, just skip this part if you're only interested in the run and not me. You'll know you're at the right spot when you see the stats screen. This is going to be a long one. I'll try and remember to make the clickable chapters thing so that you can skip it if you want to. Hey, and if I forget, yell at me on Twitter and in the comments until I fix it. Anyway, uh, this work week is really important, and I'm hoping to get it done a little bit early. 
It's the last challenge that I'm working on until my wife takes a long trip to France. Next week from when I'm writing this is when it happens, so I'm taking that whole week off work so that I can spend the first few days with her and then I can spend the next few days after she leaves adjusting to living alone. Some of you already know this stuff from Twitter and everything, but my wife is a few years into her university courses to become a French translator. It's a good gig, and she's been wanting to work in language or translation forever, so this is a pretty big deal for her. Now, Fatima is fluent in French. She learned it at the same time she learned English, since she immigrated here when she was a kid and she was put into French immersion classes. Even if you're fluent in it though, you've still actually got to go to France and live there for a bit to get the practical knowledge of actually getting to translate things to French people. So as part of her university program, she has to take a bunch of courses in a university in France. Makes sense, I'm super proud of her, she'll do awesome. This does mean though that she's going to be flying to France on the 29th of August, and she's going to be living there until sometime in mid-January, so that's about four and a half months. I'm sure to some of you that sounds like no big deal, and to other people it sounds like a super long time. I think it depends on what kind of relationships you've been in. For us, it's a big deal. Some of you guys have been watching me since I was literally a teenager, and I'm turning 31 this month. My birthday is September 22nd, 1992, in case you're curious. Something that those of you who've watched me since the start of my channel can attest to is that Fatima has always been there. She isn't on the show very much, but I've just always been with her. I asked her out in high school, maybe a few months before I started uploading Let's Play videos to this very YouTube channel, and we've been together ever since. We're coming up on our 14 year anniversary in November, 14 years of being together, not specifically marriage. We just celebrate the whole relationship. I guess she'll be in France for that. It's a little bittersweet. The moment Fatima and I were 23 and had the money to move out from our respective homes, we got an apartment together and have lived together ever since. Those of you who are hardcore and have been with me through all of the stuff you've seen me go through, uh, Fatima was there for most of it too. The last three years of my personal life have been very difficult, with there always seemed to be some kind of crisis that needs to be solved, or a health problem getting in the way of normal life, or damn, somebody just really needs some money to take care of their car exploding or rent or something, and I mean, I can't just not help out. Most of these problems you don't really know about, because for as much as I never shut up, there's a lot of personal stuff that I keep to myself. But the whole way through each crisis, Fatima and I handled it together. More than half of my free time is spent with her, so not having her around is a massive change. Neither of us have ever lived on our own, so that's gonna be weird. And if you think that sounds like a big change for me, then imagine what's gotta be like for her, going through the same massive change but in a different country, away from her friends. Yeah, she gets a fun trip to France, and the weather is awesome, but it's also a lot of schoolwork. I'm not really one of those guys who gets super excited for boys night or whatever, where they celebrate time away from their wife. Like, I really appreciate my alone time, I'm a self-described friendly hermit, but I just like a bit of alone time to recharge. I still like spending time with people who are important to me. My idea of a fun and relaxing night is playing multiplayer RimWorld with Fatima and cooking some homemade nachos together or watching some NWA Power because it's awesome and you should all go look it up on YouTube right now and make sure that they know that their show is awesome. Don't be one of the dorks on Twitter who talk about how bad it is and they've never watched it before. It's so good, you have no idea. Anyway. I'm sure you've noticed from the dates that I brought up that this is in the recent past. This is going to get real meta and be super weird for me to write and read, but it'll make the most sense to you if I put it this way. These events I'm talking about are in the future for the Madrat who's writing this, the present for the Madrat who's voicing this, and in the past for the Madrat who's in the live chat in the premiere with you right now. So if you've been following me on Twitter, then you already know about all of this in more detail, and probably for a long time now. So yeah, you're hearing the voice of a man who's already gone through with this change, but the words of the same man anticipating the change, preparing for the change, slightly dreading the change. I'm an emotional guy when it comes to family stuff, so I know this is going to be hard on me, but that'll be okay. If you want to hear how it's going as of uh, September 4th when I'm scheduled to voice this over, then wait for the outro. Those ad-libbed outros actually are ad-libbed. There's no script. 
So I can just tell you how it's going then. I can't really now, because this part is scripted, and I can't see the future. Anyway, I'm writing all of this while I'm playing the challenge. I want to get this done ASAP, so I'm going to use Rare Candy Cheat to level up if I have to level up past level 70, which I assume we need to. It won't affect our stats in any bad way, since the effort values are already long since maxed out, so all it's going to do is save me time so that I can spend it with my wife before she goes to France for the next four or so months. Also, I'll be taking that week off so I can spend more time with her, so that means that you guys aren't going to get a challenge what is now next week for you. I think that's pretty reasonable, right? Uh, I've rambled way too long. Let's go try the Elite Four again. Okay, so I tried the Chantel fight a few times at level 70, but it goes horribly every single time because of Curse. Weirdly enough, even without using Defense Curl at all, they just pick Curse every time instead of Earthquake. I'm nowhere near getting a one-shot on it, and that has me a bit worried. I think I'll just use Rare Candies and try this fight a handful of times every five or so levels, unless I think that it'll take less than that. Once we can beat Chantel, then I'll start trying to beat the other Elite Four members too. Marshall might still be the hardest one though, it's hard to say. So we're level 75 and this started insane. We one-shot Kofagrigus with a crit. Then we move on to Golurk, who instead of using Curse like every other time, crit an Earthquake to take us to only 74 health. Then we crit Shadow Ball in return to take him down. Yes, the first three moves of this attempt were all crits, their moves included. Next was Chandelier, and this was a long one. Right away, Psychic almost made us faint, so I had to use Rest right away. While we were asleep, we kept getting hammered by Psychic and lost some special defense in the process. I thought I'd be doomed because of that, but I decided to just keep trying. We brought her super close to fainting when she used a full restore, so we had to rest more. By the time we woke up and landed two Shadow Balls, we only had 78 health left, but at least we got a two-shot this time. Jellicent brings us to a sliver the moment she comes out just for us to, of course, use rest. Jellicent is a nightmare to fight, constantly forcing us to rest, especially when she disables Shadow Ball for a while. This would be so much easier if the special drop didn't happen. We literally would get to red health, use a rest, get beaten up, wake up, land one shadow ball before it's disabled, then have to rest again. It took entire minutes, but eventually we took her out and won that absolutely awful fight. Looks like Grimsley still isn't happening yet. I tried a bunch, and after losing a ton of tries to unlucky crits, I found that we don't stand a chance against Basharp. He does enough damage that we can't outrest him, and we never get a chance to use Defense Curl earlier in the fight because of all of their fighting type moves. I could see this being possible in another 5 or so levels though. Okay, level 80, and we just failed this 20 times in a row. I need to build up Defense Curls or I can't make it through the fight. But I can't do that against Scrafty because he starts using Sand Attack if my defense gets too high. That means I have to do it against Crocodile, and the problem is I always get critically hit. Seriously, 20 attempts and not a single one where he didn't crit us. He gets to hit us that many times. We just give him too many chances to attack. It wouldn't be a problem if he didn't do so much damage with Earthquake. It may not hurt us much when our defense is high, but crits bypass our defense buffs, so it's just a death sentence. We're already, what, 26 levels higher than our first attempt, and we're still getting destroyed? This is rough. Okay, so I spent ages trying this fight over and over every couple level ups. At level 90, we started to finally stand a chance even when they crit. So I started spending lots of time trying battles and seeing what would happen. Okay, so first, Scrafty takes out almost 100 of our health with Brick Break as we wipe him out with Return. For Crocodile, I started spamming Defense Curl and Rest, because this is literally the only chance we're going to get to spam Defense Curl. He still crits us just like he did a million times at a lower level, but now we could just hardly survive it. Once we maxed out our defense, we finished him off with Return. Next is Basharp, who could hardly hurt us with physical moves, but then he crit us right away before we took him out, so we were going into the Lipard fight with low health. We lost the first turn to Fake Out, and we lucked out on Night Slash not critting, as we used Rest to just be as safe as possible. 
Once we woke up, we were immobilized by love for three turns in a row, and we got crit, but we still one-shot it as soon as we could attack. What a nightmare of a fight. Next, I went after Caitlyn, the psychic gym leader, just because I figured that we could totally overpower her with how many levels we've gained since the last time I tried. And yeah, it was easy. Let's hope that we can beat the fighting one. Back to Marshall, and man, this one took a few tries. Okay, so we can take a throw with return, and against Conkeldur, we spend some time building up our defense curls and healing with rest. Conkeldur just keeps lowering his own speed with hammer fists, so we don't need to worry about him being faster than us. Once we maxed out our defense, we finished him off. Mine Shao right after was a one-shot, and last was Sok, who can't get one-shot because of his ability, but our defense is too high for him to one-shot us, so we took him out. Finally! With Elite Four down, all that's left is the final two fights with N and Getsis. I'm gonna be honest, I think it's gonna go okay. Wow. Alright, uh... So the N fight really surprised me. I started up by building defense curls, and I was worried Zekrom would really mess us up, but it turned out that Fusion Bolt is physical, so he went down pretty quickly. He was doing like 5 damage with Giga Impact, it was incredible to see. And uh... I don't know what to tell you, we totally destroyed N's team. Turns out he pretty much only uses physical moves against us, so we had a really easy time. I don't know how I never noticed this before. Getsis is probably going to be a lot harder, though. Okay, time for the final battle with Getsis. Right away, Kofagrigus hit us with Toxic, so although I could build up our defense a little, I had to rest to heal. He spams Psychic a lot while we're asleep, and I was worried about special defense drops, so I ended up taking him out after waking up rather than building up more defense. Next is Hydragon, who hit a huge Focus Blast, then got one shot. Yeah, that's why I really didn't want special defense drops. That Focus Blast would have been way worse. Next up is Buffalant, and he keeps spamming physical moves, so I took it as my chance to heal back up and then get the rest of my defense curls in. We did get crit during it, though, and nearly fainted at one point. That was way too close. Once we took him out, we had to deal with accuracy losses due to muddy water from Seismitoad. He could hardly hurt us, but accuracy losses are so rough. Next was Basharp, who I missed a bit, but he could hardly hurt us with the extra defense, so I just rested to heal back up. Then I took him out with the next return that actually hit. Last was Electros, who went down in one return. That was a first try. Well, that was really hard near the end, but still really fun. It's always weird when you get a run where the Elite Four are super hard and then the final fight is really easy. Helps give us something new, though. I really hope you guys like that run. Like I said earlier, the next week is going to be Admin Week, or was Admin Week, so that I can spend that time with my wife before she goes to France. So there's going to be no challenge video next week for you. There might still be streams, though, either on YouTube or my Twitch channel that you can find in the description. Not sure yet. I kind of like doing some streams on one and then doing some other streams on the other one. So I go back and forth between YouTube and Twitch streams. Anyway, I'm looking at your suggestions in the comments, in the challenge request section of my Discord channel, and on Twitter. Subscribe, ring the bell, stay tuned. Alright, uh, outro time. So, it is September 4th. I am, in fact, recording this voiceover on the day that I originally scheduled it. Things did work out for that. Uh, I did do two streams already, both on Twitch. Uh, the first one was of Civilization Colonization, the We the People mod. Um, I was gonna upload that to YouTube, the, the VOD of that. Um, but then shortly after the stream, uh, Jetstream, a uh, longtime viewer, messaged me and let me know that my version of the mod was out of date. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I got the newer version now and I don't think I'm going to stream that game again for a little bit just because, man, there is so, so, so much new stuff in the Civilization Colonization mod that I got to spend more time on my own time just learning it before I stream it again. There's so much new stuff, it's unbelievable. And the other thing I streamed was I started a stream through a Fallout New Vegas, which I'm sure plenty of you know I do challenges in that game. I've beaten that game a billion times. I love that game. I used to do some Let's Plays of that game a very, very long time ago, probably 10 years ago or something. So it's been nice to start streaming that again. Now that is up on YouTube, kind of. 
Uh, at the time that I'm recording this voiceover, at least, the video is uploaded to YouTube, but it's set to unlisted because I don't have like the thumbnail and all of that stuff done yet. Uh, so people can watch it early just by going through the link on Twitter because I do that all the time. You can even watch these challenges early if you just go to Twitter. You don't even need to watch it on Twitter. You just go to my Twitter and you click the YouTube link and it takes you to the channel where you can watch the video before it's public. Like I, I do that like every week now, but I guess I only ever really talk about it in outros and stuff. So a lot of people don't know about that. But I kind of like when a lot of people don't know about it. It's like a special secret treat for the, the hardcore few who last this long into the outro or who actually do follow me on Twitter and sees that like I post these little secrets and fun extra stuff. I don't think anyone else really does this. I haven't bumped into any other YouTubers who do. And even though I know a ton of YouTubers who are seemingly aware that I do this, it seems like none of them want to take up the mantle of doing it as well. So you know what? If everybody wants to leave me to have all of the fun of uploading secret videos just for like a small insular community on my YouTube channel that only the 0.01% are ever going to see, um, I don't know, I'm happy to keep that mantle as the only dude who seems to be doing it. <laughs> I think it's really fun. Whatever. Um, I guess the thing you probably want to hear me ad lib about is uh, Fatima, though. She's doing okay. Um, today, I, I think it was either today or last night. No, I guess it's today. Would be her orientation at her new university over in France. Still talking every day and everything, of course. She's having a rough time with the move and everything because setting up uh, her student residence and everything has been such a pain. She's been days without electricity to the point that she had to go find a hotel just to charge her phone, which is just brutal. She's got like culture shock from dietary stuff there because uh, it's not that like French food is super, super different. It's that... Um, is that a lot of the food that she's able to get her hands on over there is like restaurant food because she doesn't have electricity right now, so she can't cook for herself. So she's got to get restaurant food and a lot of the restaurant food around her. Um, I don't know. It's for someone with a different palate and she hasn't adapted to it yet. Look, they put salami on hamburgers. She ordered hamburgers and there's like salami on it. Now, that might be totally, totally normal to someone from, from France, I don't know. Uh, but over here, I've never heard of that in my life. I'm not saying it doesn't work together. Maybe it does, but you gotta get used to that. So there's some culture shock there in the diet. In terms of language stuff, though, she's perfectly fine. Um, she, people she's talked to at the school have already let her know that she has by far the best French of any exchange student that they've talked to who's there right now. Um, she has had no problems communicating to other people in French uh, who live in France, obviously. They always just say that her French is awesome. And uh, every time that she says she's from Canada, they're blown away because they associate Canada with really bad French. Because um, a fun fact about uh, Quebecois French, a lot of people in, in France don't really understand it very well. It, it is a very divergent form of French, but Fatima doesn't speak Quebecois. She learned like Ontario French, which is slightly more Acadian, but also a lot more European than Quebecois French. Anyway, there's always going to be little bits of weirdness like that. There's always going to be things that you don't totally prepare for when you're <laughs> moving to a whole nother country and everything. You know, like she didn't know that she was going to have to set up her own uh, electricity in a, what, a dorm room? Like student housing? She didn't know that she would have to call the electricity company and set up her own electricity there. You don't do that here. That That isn't, uh, that isn't how you do that here. And also in Ontario, if you're hooking up your water, then you're hooking up your electricity at the same time uh, because we use hydroelectric electricity. You take that for granted when you move over to another country and you forget that the same company doesn't run both, you know? Um, yeah, so things like that are a little difficult, but overall she's doing well. And uh, I guess if you're curious about me too, I'm doing pretty well too. Um, it's been, uh, six days from, so when I'm voicing this over September 4th, it's been six days since she left almost a full week. Um, I'm doing all right. The cats are doing all right. I'm getting pretty used to it pretty quick. Just, you know, made my own schedule, started waking up at my own time and everything. I already know how to cook uh, decently well enough. I, I have a bunch of meals that I quite like and I know, know the nutrition of and everything. So it's pretty easy for me to just plan that out and batch make that and everything. 
it's actually pretty efficient. Uh, I have a system where we have like a local catering place that caters to restaurants, right? So they sell at that awesome restaurant price where the restaurants get like the cheap food in bulk and then they cook it and prepare it and they're able to upsell it because, you know, they made it for you in good quality and whatnot. Uh, well, we have a local meat catering place that's willing to just sell to individuals on bulk. You know, it's just big bulk orders, but they'll ship it right to your house because that's how they kept afloat during uh, during the pandemic. So they never stopped doing it after the pandemic because it was very profitable for them. And you know what? It's very profitable for us, too, because I can buy bulk chicken and bulk salmon for very cheap. So... I just load it all up in the fridge. So every morning I can take down a slice of salmon or chicken breast, get a marinade put together, get some rice going or something. And uh, there we go. That's lunch or dinner later. Super, super easy. Get it in bulk. Just grab it out of the freezer and make a little marinade. So yeah, like home workflow stuff. It's all fine. Everything's been fine there. It's mostly just, uh, you know, it's quiet. It feels weird when you've been living with someone for so long. You know, I'll have my headset on and I'll hear like a, a big house creak in the hallway, right? Because I live in a townhouse and it's a, it's a pretty old one, so it, it creaks a lot. Um, you'll hear like a big creak in the hall and I go taking my headset off, just like reflexively thinking that's the noise of, uh, of Fatima walking to my studio to come say hi to me. No, she's not there. It was just a house creak or maybe the cats were walking by or something like that. Or I'll have a moment where like, uh, I'm reading like Wrestle News or something, and oh my god, it's 316 o'clock right now. Happy Stone Cold number. What a coincidence. I was just talking about wrestling. I'll like read some crazy wrestling news, and my first reflex is take the headset off, stand up. I gotta go find Fatima and talk to her about this insanity. Uh, she's not home. <laughs> she's not home at all. I gotta sit back down, open up Discord, and send her a message instead. It sounds a little sad. Uh, maybe when I'm when, when I'm saying it out loud like this, like that would be like heart wrenching, but it's honestly not too bad. Um, it, it's it's comforting knowing that like I don't know, life isn't super hard alone. It's just kind of lonely, and that she's gonna be back in four and a half months. We've been together for like a billion years now. Four and a half months is nothing. It just feels like a lot right now, and at some point it's just gonna be a memory. So. Uh, yeah, I'm not really sweating it too much. I, I think I'm handling it pretty well. I feel so bad for Fatima because I think that she's handling it worse, but she's got it harder. She's the one flying to a whole nother country to go do schooling in a different language and all this. So, you know, I understand that it's hard for her, but uh, we're supportive and we talk to each other every day and everything's awesome there. So at least there's that. So don't you guys go worrying about me. Uh, I've been getting a lot of messages lately, just, you know, people coming in and they wish me well and they tweet me and, you know, how's Fatima doing? Um, I hope you're doing okay. I hope things aren't too lonely, whatever. They come into the Twitch stream and they, they bring up Fatima and just say like, hey, I hope you're not having a hard time or whatever. I just want to say right up front that like, I, I appreciate the, um, the, the kind intentions and everything behind that because I know that that's so obviously just people going out of their way to being nice and I really appreciate that and I appreciate that you care just uh, I don't know it, don't don't bring it up all the time because there's so many of you and so many of you want to message me and just tell me that like hey I know this is hard but like you're gonna be okay and it just gets frustrating at a point to be told over and over and over and over and over. Hey, I know you're lonely, but it'll be okay. Dude, I know it's going to be okay. I've been saying it since before you were. But if you're going to just remind me over and over that my wife isn't here, yeah, you're going to make me feel lonely when I wasn't already feeling lonely, you know? Or maybe I already was feeling lonely and you just made it feel worse. And I know you didn't intend that, so I'm never going to get mad at someone for that, but... You know, that's why I point that out. Hey, remember that I am a dude. I, I'm a real guy. Uh, I get emotional about this stuff because it's family stuff and family's really near and dear to me. It's like the only thing I'll cry over. And um, yeah, just remember that I'm a real person and that there's a whole lot of people who want to check up on me. So when you go to message me and say, hey, hope you're not lonely today, 10 other people have already done that. It's okay. You don't need to say it. I get it. So yeah, uh, I feel like that's kind of my thoughts on that. My stomach is growling, and I didn't skip breakfast. It's just this this voiceover went way longer than I was expecting, and I think I've got kind of a long day of work ahead of me. Whew. 
Okay, we'll see how that goes. I'm gonna go make myself some lunch. Thank you everybody so much for watching, and until next time, have a nice day.